What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode four of Film Time with Fava, brought to you by Fired Up Network. I'm your host, Anthony Fava. Now, let's get right into this. In case you can't tell by my getup, this is going to be a very Italian episode of Film Time with Fava because we are reviewing the new Pixar animated film. Well, I shouldn't have to say animated film because all Pixar movies are animated, but the new Pixar movie, Luca. Now, I have been anticipating this movie very much as it is set in Italy, my motherland. I wasn't born there, but my motherland. And yeah, it's been one of my most anticipated films of the year. Um, It had a lot to live up to with the other Pixar movie that came out this year, Soul, which was pretty groundbreaking in itself. So yeah, Luca had a lot to live up to. Did it live up to that? Well, that's what we're going to find out here. Um, So yeah, let's get right into this review. So the movie Luca is directed by Enrico Casarosa, very Italian name, Luca Brazzi, uh, the guy the father. Um, Yeah, just to start things off with a quick synopsis of the movie. So the movie follows the main protagonist, Luca, who is actually a sea monster kind of creature. He's kind of a humanoid underwater creature who lives in the ocean around Italy. And basically he's in this underwater world but always hears about the surface but his parents always tell him how dangerous it is and how you know the humans the surface dwellers hate the sea creatures so he's always kind of worried about it but then he eventually finds someone underwater who's going to the surface named alberto who's a fellow sea creature and yeah from there he goes onto the surface when they go onto the surface they turn into humans and from there, they go on this wild adventure through the sea- streets of a uh, seaside town in Italy called Porto Rosso, which is based on the real um, area of Cinque Terre, which means five lands, which is the five seaside regions of Italy there. And yeah, they go on this whole journey there with some human friends. And through this, they learn, you know... Uh, the humans learn to accept the sea creatures as, you know, accept them for their differences. And the sea creatures learn that, you know, um, not everything is scary and you can branch out from your bubble kind of thing. And yeah, let's actually get into the review portion of this with my first part, um, which is the cast of this movie. So Luca, the main character, is played by Jacob Tremblay, who you may know from the movie Room, award winning with Brie Larson. Um, That one's about an abduction victim who raises her child in this small shack for years. I really loved that movie. That was a very good movie. Um, Really show the dynamic of a mother and son in a situation that not a lot of people can relate to. And I do also believe it's based on a book. That was a great movie. Jacob Tremblay was amazing. That was kind of his coming out party um, in terms of his acting. He was very young in it. uh, And he is also in the comedy Good Boys, which is sort of like a super bad-esque, but for the younger generation, I'd say. And yeah, he comes in here and plays the main character, Luca, and he does it very well. Uh, Luca kind of reminded me of Arlo from The Good Dinosaur, which is one of my favorite Pixar movies, even though a lot of people say it's one of the worst ones. I love that movie. Uh, Yeah, he's a lot like Arlo in that he's a bit clueless to the outside world and kind of naive, but I liked this character a bit better. I feel like he had more substance to him, and... He really got the Italian words down and everything like that and the awkwardness of the character. And besides that, other characters to be noted, um, Alberto is played by Jack Dylan Grazer. Yeah, he played one of the lead characters in Shazam, not the main guy, but the co-star to... What's the name? I don't know, he played uh, Flynn Rider in Tangled. Uh, anyways, but he plays Shazam. Uh, this guy plays his kind of sidekick guy in Shazam, and he's very good as Alberto, kind of plays the mentor, more rebellious side of Luca in his character, kind of the guy that introduces him to the land. And the <laughs> one of the main images in this movie is the Vespa, which, for those who don't know, is an Italian kind of motorcycle scooter combo kind of thing. 
which are very popular in the streets of Italy. And in this film, they obsess over the Vespa as this like thing that's going to allow them to ride across the land and be so free. And then by the end, it kind of symbolizes something else, which I'll get to later. And besides that, we have the, the main female in the movie is Julia, spelled the same as my Nana's name. And she's played by Emma Berman. I don't really know what else she's been in, but she was pretty good in this role. Um, for what she had to do, she was a very good character. She was their main friend on the land. And when it came time for her to find out that they are sea creatures, she was accepting of them. And it was nice to see that, that she didn't discriminate against them, but she wanted them out of her life to protect them more so, which was very good. But one of my favorite characters in the movie was actually her father, Massimo, who is the one-armed fisherman who, uh, yeah, his character design is amazing. He's like this huge guy just missing an arm, fishes all day, makes pasta. One of the best characters in this movie, in my opinion. Um, also, oh, the main antagonist, Ercole. I didn't expect the antagonist of this movie to be this kind of person, but he's basically just a like a greasy Italian. Uh, looks like he's like late teens early 20s has like a pencil mustache but he's just like a huge dick i guess yeah <laughs> that's the only way to put it. he has like his little posse of kids that like surround him he rides his crappy vespa around town and he's always like oh who wants to see me to this a bigger sandwich like he eats big sandwiches for some reason but he was he was great he was like the perfect amount of annoying and just like pathetic at the same time so he almost wasn't the antagonist. Actually, I feel like in this movie, the antagonist was almost society. Wow. Anyways. Yeah, so let's get to some of my overall thoughts of the movie. So let's start off with the Italian setting. This made me feel very much in the motherland. Um, they pretty much nailed it. Have you seen pictures of like seaside Italian towns with villas and whatnot? and you know all the ocean side and whatnot um this nails that to a t everyone riding their vespas around all the old nonnas nonnas and nonnas walking around the streets all the uh cafes and whatnot i've said whatnot about 10 times who cares yeah they really nail the setting of this the ocean is beautiful when he when luca and alberto are swimming through it even when they're just fishing with massimo and julia they really nailed the setting in this movie, and it's really beautiful to look at. And besides that, um, let's see here. Oh, speaking of Italy, though, there is a lot of Italian language used in the movie. And for, for a lot of it, it is pretty funny the way it's used. Or like it kind of symbolizes something like in the fi finale, which is a bike race through the town of Porto Rosso, which is the way that... Luca and Alberto plan to win the Vespa that they wanted. Um, basically, whenever they're about to go down this large hill, the Julia girl, she says, Oh, Santa Mozzarella. I guess that's the name of the hill. I didn't really get what the meaning of Santa Mozzarella was, but apparently I think it's the uh, name of the hill that they have to go down at the end. It's like a huge hill. They go down on their bikes in the big... Uh, Porto Rosso bike race. Yeah, times like that, I was like, yeah, the Italian's pretty good. And then when um, I, I really liked how Luca and Alberto kind of just heard random things said by Italians and then would just say it to other people without knowing the meaning. Like one of the main things they would do is go up to people and say, hey, estupido, which means, hey, stupid. And like they go, like at one part, they go up to a group of nonas and Alberto's telling Luca to say it and he says it. And then they, slap him with their purse like that was funny but then other times they kind of just randomly threw in italian words out of nowhere and at those parts i kind of just thought okay uh, you kind of just threw that in for nothing and then also it, sometimes it didn't make sense when they were speaking italian because the characters had regular american i guess accents or american canadian north american whatever you want to call it western accents i guess with like sometimes a bit of an Italian twang and then they just come out with these huge Italian accents and say these Italian words and it kind of just felt a bit out of place. Um, this is a strange uh, 
strange comparison but in the movie the boy in the striped pajamas yeah i know went from pixar to sad dark movies but in that movie i noticed the characters are supposed to be in germany and they all have british accents and of course in a western film you don't want people to not be able to not that you can't understand a german accent but you don't want people to not be able to understand your main characters but at the same time this is a historical movie I don't know why I'm getting so deep into the Boy in the Stripe Jams. This is about Luca, and I really shouldn't be taking Luca this seriously for their use of accents because it's a kid's movie. <laughs> but that was just something I noticed is that they have a lot of Western twang. Meanwhile, they're throwing in Italian words, which makes sense because it's in Italy, but it's just a little thing I wanted to point out. Um, in terms of the story itself, this this movie, Soul broke down barriers that hadn't been broken down in an animated movie before you know it showed the meaning of life in a way like what makes someone's life have meaning with this movie it's more of a basic story um it how do i how do i explain the story of this movie i said it's very basic yet i can't even explain it um it's it's a fish out of water story to be punny so it's about a guy used to his surroundings scared to break through goes to the service finds this new world and becomes accepted by the new world kind of a hunchback of notre dame mulan all these kinds of films have had the same kind of beats where they're used to their life they break out of their life they're accepted in their new life they find happiness and the story does follow that. And at first when I was watching it, I was a little, I felt it was a little basic. But as the movie went on, it takes a, it takes a good variation in this kind of basic storytelling. But it uses themes that are actually very relevant to our current society today, which I will go over later. And... I guess while I'm talking about some of the negatives of the movie, besides the basic story, the way the fish turn into humans, I know it's a kid's movie and, like, it doesn't need to be that complicated, but literally they exit the water and become humans. I did like, though, that they threw in that they had to learn how to walk, although then when the parents leave the water for what is apparently their first time, they just immediately know how to walk on land. That seemed a bit weird, considering at the beginning, Luca had to, like, actually learn how to walk. He was falling over and all that. So yeah, I just noticed the, yeah, just turning the humans immediately when they exit the water. And then when they're on land, if they get water splashed on them in any spot, it'll just turn to scales at that spot. I noticed that was a bit convenient, but it's a kid's movie at heart. So it should be simple in a sense. So I already talked about the performances. So now I actually want to talk about some of the shots in this movie, which were really nice. As I said earlier, the underwater shots. Oh, actually, one more thing. In terms of the characters in the movie, there's a great cameo by Borat himself, Sasha Baron Cohen, as Luca's uncle who lives in the deep waters. So he's like this giant angler fish who has a heart attack. And then Luca gets told to punch him in the heart to restart it. Kicks time, ha ha. Yeah, Motley Crue. But um, yeah, that cameo was great. Just this lazy, creepy anglerfish guy who's like, "Oh, Luca, I'm gonna take you into the deep. You're gonna live with me." Because his parents know that he went to the land, and they don't want him going there again. So they're trying to make him move away, which is what ends up pushing him to just run away onto the land with Alberto and his Vespa. But yeah, that was a great uh, cameo there. But besides that, we were talking about some of the shots. Now, I know it's an animated movie, so there's no actual camera work or cinematography involved. Well, I guess there's cinematography, but there's no actual camera work involved in getting these shots, but they're shots nonetheless. And as I said earlier, the underwater scenes are great. At the opening scene where he's swimming through the water, herding his fish as if they were sheep. I thought that was really cute and funny how he's a fish herder. Kind of Prince of Egypt-esque, as a jo Moses was a shepherd. It's just Catholic imagery in Luca? Who knows? It is an Italian movie. But yeah, the underwater shots were great, but the shot in this movie that I really loved was 
and it actually represented his Luca's evolution from being so close-minded in his underwater world to having his mind open on land. And it was when Julia, his friend, is showing him her textbooks from school about astronomy and space. And he's learning, he thought stars were basically anchovies in the sky and all this. And she tells him, no, they're like burning little balls of gas. And he's like, what, what, what? gas and fire, what? He's like, his mind is basically open. She tells him what planets are. She gets him a telescope. He's looking around. He's discovering all this stuff. And this one scene in that part where he's imagining he's running around the rings of Saturn. It was just so nice seeing this guy basically seeing the universe for the first time. I know none of us have actually seen the whole universe, but he's seeing these things for the first time. Like his whole world he thought was just underwater, but there's this whole bigger, well, I guess the ocean's the biggest thing, but there's this whole world apart from the water that he didn't know about. And seeing his mind open and his curiosity just going was really nice in an emotional sense. But the way they showed it with him running around Saturn's rings was, it was really nice. It was really touching even. Okay, now, besides that, the themes of this movie are something that I really, really enjoyed. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy and relate to these themes. So there's three main ones. So the first theme that I'm going to go over is stepping out of your bubble. Now, obviously, this is done through Luca finally breaking free, going onto the land, making friends there, running away from home, even when he's not so... Oh, yeah. This... So I... I meant to say the theme is stepping out of your bubble even when others try and stop you or discourage you from it. And that is through his parents' discouragement of him ever going on to land. And he really breaks out of that bubble and discovers that there's so much more to life than just his ocean home. And it's a, it's a, really, it's a really good theme for people to know, just knowing that you don't have to be afraid to branch out you don't have to be afraid to take risks to an extent you don't want to jump off a building that's not good um but yeah no the theme of breaking out of your bubble is very good and especially for young children that's a good thing to know especially if you're a shy kid or something like that like luca is it's a good thing to know and uh the next theme i wanted to go over is letting go now in the movie this is shown through actually the character of Alberto because the whole movie he his dream is to get this Vespa and for him and Luca to ride off together and form their own life but then as the movie goes on there's this conflict with him because he's realizing that Luca might not want that anymore and he might want to go to school on land with Julia and learn about all these things in the world that he's been so curious about ever since he got there and at first he's mad about this and we see a lot of conflict with Luca and him Especially at, there's one part that's really, really hits hard and it's Alberto shows Julia who he truly is to like kind of show Luca that these people won't accept them and he turns into the sea creature and then Luca, rather than being like, yeah, I'm one too, he basically says, oh, it's a sea monster and throws Alberto onto the bus, doesn't admit that he himself is also one of those creatures and Alberto is chased into the water by the Italians. <laughs> uh, sorry. And yeah, it was a really hard, hard-hitting moment because you see a guy turn on, I guess, his people in a sense. But in doing that, he kind of tells Alberto, hey, like what you want isn't what I want anymore. And as hard as it was for him to do that, I wouldn't say it was the right move, but his his point got across. And then, as I was saying with that theme, it's then carried on the end as Luca is given a ticket to go to school on the train to Genoa with Julia. And the way that he gets the ticket is because Alberto sold the Vespa that they won in the bike race at the end to get him that ticket to go to school. And that was really touching because Alberto, the whole movie, his dream was to get this Vespa and for him and Luca to ride off together and form their own independent life. 
and he gave that up so that Luca could live his dream, which he felt was more important than his. And that was a really touching scene. I almost cried at that part. That was oof. that, and when he was saying bye to his parents at the end before leaving on the train, that was touching as well. And yeah, just the theme of letting go is really important because a lot of people gotta should know that sometimes you have to let things go, no matter how good they seem at the time. Sometimes things become toxic. <laughs> I'm clearly like referencing relationships and stuff, but that's like the main area of letting go, letting go of your beliefs that they become maybe not what you believe in anymore. Letting go of friends. If you feel like they're a bad influence or if they're just not treating you right. Yeah, just knowing when to let go and that it's okay to have to let things or people go is a good lesson to be learned. And it's done very well through this movie, giving up something to better your dream, in a sense. Uh, And the final and most prominent theme in this movie, I'd say, is being proud and accepting... Uh, being accepting of people's differences. This film explores that heavily through the discrimination between the sea creatures and the humans who know the sea creatures through myth. That's why the sea creatures have to hide on land as humans and are so scared of being revealed because especially in the seaside town of Puerto Rosso, there's all these rumors about the sea creatures and how they're going to attack the humans and whatnot so yeah there's big discrimination especially when it's first revealed that alberto is a sea creature to julia and ercole the villain of the movie you see the discrimination firsthand as they chase him back into the water and even when luca and alberto are walking through Puerto Rosso for the first time you see all these signs of just beware the sea creature and oh like all these reward signs for killing a sea creature essentially which makes them very terrified to be there and just yeah it shows all the discrimination just something that they don't even know exists which is crazy that would be like if aliens never came if well i mean aliens haven't been here yet we still don't know man i think the aliens are coming soon not gonna lie but that'd be like if there was a rumor that an alien was on earth and everyone just said yeah kill the alien like what And this discrimination aspect of the movie is then shown very well through the character of Massimo, who is Julia's father. He's the one-armed fisherman that kind of takes Alberto and Luca under his wings, gives them employment in order to enter the bike race with Julia. And yes, he has one arm, and there's this really really nice part in the movie where they're on the fishing boat and Alberto and Luca are just looking at his missing arm and he Massimo looks back with this like serious expression he's like oh yeah a shark bit it off but he says in like an Italian like a shark I beat it off and they're they're looking at him thinking oh my god this guy is crazy like what a bad man but then he laughs it off and just says no, I came out this way. Like, just showing that... It shows a good parallel, actually, between him and them because they're sea creatures. They didn't choose to be that way. He came out with one arm. He didn't get in an accident. I guess in an accident, you really have a choice, but that's just how he was born. He accepts it every day. And, it's, yeah, it's a really nice kind of theme, secondary theme to that of accepting who you are, which is also very useful for a lot of people. And then we see the discrimination theme come to a conclusion at the end when the sea creatures are finally accepted in the community as, uh, so basically Alberto and Luca win the bike race. And through doing that though, there's rain and it is revealed that they are in fact sea monsters and everyone's ready to, you know, put them in a net, kill them the whole bit. But then Massimo is the one that comes out, the guy with the, with no arm, Julia's father, the fisherman. And he says, no, they're not sea monsters. These are our friends, Alberto and Luca. And they just won the bike race. So we should respect them and give them their trophy and their Vespa. And everyone kind of realizes, 
oh yeah, they're just people. They're the same as us, no matter how scaly they are. And I think especially in today's climate, where there's a lot of discrimination going on, this is a, it's a very good message. Just in general, um, everyone should be treated the same, no matter what you look like. We breathe the same air. We all walk on the same ground. We drink the same water. Why should we be seen any different? That's my little PSA. And I think this movie, this is a good time for a movie like this to come out. Although it's a kid's movie, I think this sends a great message to today's youth about just acceptance and, and no zero tolerance on discrimination. And I love that this movie took that stance in what appeared to be a simpler story at first, but then really evolved into something much greater by the end. And I really appreciated that. Sorry, this is a more serious episode. I uh, might not have any funny clips to post on Instagram after. But yeah, in general, this movie, I said it started off a bit wonky with me just thinking it was this basic story, but it just really got better as it went on. And that's basically all I have to say about this movie. It was very good. It's up there in my favorite Pixar movies. And let's see here. The comedy, as I said, excellent in this movie, especially that part with Sasha Baron Cohen. Um, and the, the it, hey, stupido, that part was great too, where they're screaming at the nanas and they just clap them. Speaking of those nanas that hit him with the purse at the beginning when they called them estupido. Uh, they they actually end up being sea monsters at the end when Luca and Alberto and Luca's parents are shown to be sea monsters to the community for the first time. They're finally accepted. Then these old nonas like rip off their umbrellas and uh, their I get head coverings. I don't really know what they were. They're like the ones that old grandmas wear, you know. Um, and the rain hits them as real. They're secret monsters too, and everyone's like, "What? Okay." <laughs> just immediately accepted um but yeah no this i really like this movie a lot and for that reason if you remember my scoring it is one through five there might have been a zero in there somewhere but i'm gonna give it a four out of five that's right a four out of, i was gonna get I've seen 3.5, but I, I wanted to bump it up to that four. I'm not going to give it a five. No, no, this ain't, this ain't winning no Oscars, but it's a four, which means very good. So I would say go out and watch this for sure. Not just if you're a fan of animated movies, not just if you're a fan of Italians. We're playing uh, Austria tomorrow. We're going to get that dub round of 16, baby. We're coming for Euro 2021. Anyways, yeah, so a four out of five, which is very good for me. Um... Is it better than Soul? Here's the thing. Since I made my animated top 10 list last week, I realized there was a lot of movies that I left out that I kind of just forgot about somehow. Like Shrek. Shrek probably should have been on that list. Soul. Soul at least should have gotten an honorable mention. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think those are the only two I missed, but... So with that in mind, let's let's go back and say that Shrek and Soul at least got honorable mentions on that list. I said last week we're gonna see if Luca makes the list. Luca is gonna make the list, but not in a numbered spot. Luca is gonna make the list as an honorable mention. I loved this movie. It was very good. I love me some Italian imagery, not just when I'm saying Italian imagery. I love me some Italian seascapes, some Italian language, some Italian comedy. It was like Godfather meets um, Water Horse in a way. Hmm. Shout out if you've seen Water Horse, great movie. It's really not. Um, yeah. It, it had a lot of things I really liked, and that's why I gave it this score, and that's why I would consider an honorable mention on my top 10 animated movies list. Is it taking Prince of Egypt's spot at number one? No way. That movie is untouchable for now. We'll see what comes out in the future. This movie didn't... Luca didn't redefine the genre or anything, 
but it was a great feel good story with an amazing message, amazing premise. And it's Italian. Come on, Italians just do it better. <laughs> all right, guys. So that's all I got for this week. Um, I'll see you next week with episode five. Wow, we're already five episodes in. Also, thanks for the big views I've been getting on Twitter, guys. Uh, last week's episode got, I think, around 500. The one before that, over 900. We're almost at 1,000 views on one of my v- things on Twitter. Like, come on, that's amazing. So thanks to everyone who's been watching these, listening, where, wherever you're listening from, whatever platform you're listening on. Just thank you so much for listening. It really helps a lot. Uh, it feels really great to get my passion for film and writing out there and have an outlet to show it to everyone. So I just really love doing this and it's just really nice to get recognition for what I love doing. And with that, I'm Anthony Fava and guys, this is as real as it gets. I'll see you next week.